This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Italeri's Big Mirage, Tacom's Skoda Gun, Airfix's Battle of Britain Airfield set, and Elizabeth and Aaron square off in a Star Wars build challenge. Welcome to the New Product Rundown, the twice-monthly show where Fine Scale Modeler lifts the lid on the latest kits to show you what's inside. I'm Elizabeth Nash. And I'm Aaron Skinner. We've got a bunch to get through today, starting with... Elizabeth, I can't quite make that out. Is that an airplane or some kind of mirage? Yes, and yes. It's Italeri's 132nd Scale Mirage 3. This is the first big-scale kit of Dassault's fighter since Ravel's offering in the early 1970s. This is the shorter C version of the Delta Wing Beauty. In addition to the French Air Force, it was operated by Israel, South Africa, Argentina, and others. And in 132nd scale, it's more than 17 inches long. 43.6 centimeters for the metrically inclined. And this kit piles on the detail. Check out the terrific surface moldings. Fine engraved panel lines and petite rivets matched by terrific vents and scoops. There's a Snecma ATAR engine complete with molded plumbing, fans, afterburner, and nozzle vanes. It can be displayed out of the aircraft on a wheeled stand. Cockpit features include a multi-part ejection seat with photo-etched harness, a detailed tub with bulkheads and sidewalls, controls, pedals, a detailed instrument panel, and heads-up display. Molded structural and mechanical details mark the gear bays. The intakes run from the lips to join at the front of the engine, and the engineering looks like it should limit awkward seams. All of those parts are sandwiched by the fuselage. Then mated to the wings. They feature posable speed brakes and elevons. The wheels have flat sections to indicate the weight of the plane. The canopy and windscreen are thin and clear. The same sprue provides light lenses. To hang under the interceptor, the kit provides 500 and 1300 liter fuel tanks. Weapons include AIM-9B Sidewinders, Matra R-530 and R-550 Magic Missiles, and a pair of Rocket Pod Drop Tank Combos. In addition to the seat belts, the PE fret has part of the rear fuselage, lips for the exhaust nozzles, mirrors, parts of the vanes between the intakes and fuselage, and more. Two big cartograph decal sheets provide markings for six Mirage, including three French. The others are South African, Swiss, and Israeli. It's a terrific looking kit of a pretty plane. Nicely done, Italeri. Tacom continues to impress with its selection of unusual subjects. Including this heavy artillery piece, the Skoda M 1917 Siege Howitzer. Eight of these 42 centimeter guns were built for the Austro-Hungarian Empire during the First World War. One was finished after the armistice and was later used by the Wehrmacht, Wehrmacht? Wehrmacht. Wehrmacht to assault the Maginot Line. One, that gun would later show up during the siege of Sevastopol. For a big gun, the kit has surprisingly few parts, but they are beautifully molded in dark gray plastic. The gun tube builds from several parts centered on a massive bracket for the elevation gear. The bulk of the barrel is split in half, but fear not. The muzzle is a separate single part with sharply molded rifling inside. The gun's controls and ammunition handling equipment are finely molded and shouldn't need much cleanup. The massive supports for the howitzer are single pieces with crisp rivets and ridges. The kit includes the mounting and rotation plates the gun sat on. And a figure of the German commander at the Siege of Sevastopol, General Erich von Manstein. A small PE fret supplies a pair of handles and a riveted strap to detail the elevation gear. Painting instructions show two camouflage variations, one overall gray and the other gray and green. This looks like a pretty straightforward build of a famous gun. Pick one up, you'll get a bang out of it. Now, check out Airfix's 148 scale ready for battle kit. It combines several individual kits to give you everything you need to build a Battle of Britain airfield display. The centerpiece is the delightful Hawker Hurricane, which Aaron and I looked at a few episodes back when I was the previous doctor. And there's a full build review in the January 2016 issue of the magazine on sale December 1. This kit has markings for a single 32nd Squadron Hurricane at Biggin Hill in July 1940. So what else do you get? Well, there are two trucks. Let's start with the Bedford MWD, a light utility truck widely used by British forces during World War II. In 48 scale, it's not even four inches long, but features a detailed chassis and cargo bed. There's an engine, springs, driver controls, seats, one-piece tires, wood grain bedsides and tailgate, and cloth doors. 
Optional parts allow the cab roof and the bed's canvas cover to be on or off and the rear flap to be down or stowed. The clear windscreens can be posed up or down. The other truck is an Albion AM463 refueler, which Airfix calls a three-point fueler. Like the Bedford, the Albion comes with a detailed chassis, powertrain, and running gear. There's an engine and driver cab with clear windows. And one-part tires with separate wheels. But the heart of the kit is in the fuel tank and the complicated plumbing. The pumper control compartment can be posed open, and optional parts allow the booms to be posed in three positions. As if that's not enough, Airfix includes a 10-man, 11 with the dog, RAF ground crew and pilot set. And there are three service carts, an oil bowser, an accumulator, starter, and one for ammunition. But wait, there's more! This gift set includes two tubes of cement, 16 tubs of Humbrol acrylic paint, and two brushes. It's everything you need to build an RAF Fighter Command airfield display during the Battle of Britain. Now, unless you've been frozen in carbonite for the last three years, you'll be aware of the upcoming Star Wars movie. The Force Awakens has already generated a lot of buzz, and the merchandising is in full force. Part of that push is in model kits. Both Bandai and Ravel Germany have kits on the way. And Ravel released four in September. These are relatively simple, pre-finished, build-and-play kits. Snap tight, they feature sound and some even have lights. I looked at them in detail in the January issue of the magazine. They're a lot of fun to build. People, well me at least, are always stopping by Aaron's office to play with them. They're the perfect gateway kit for a young modeler. Now for the main event, Elizabeth and I are going to slap together two of the kits. I'll be representing the light side and building Poe's X-Wing. You're part of the Rebel Alliance and a traitor. I'm going to be getting in touch with my dark side and building the First Order TIE Fighter. You ready? To win? Absolutely. Go. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, Elizabeth? Still struggling there? I failed you, light side. Just, this is why actually, the Empire always wins. Doesn't actually need these things to fly, the X-Wing, right? Down, down, da down, down, da 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 down, 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 you're going down, down, da down, down, da down. Break out the John Williams. I'm almost there. Any day now. She might finish. Wait. <laughs> and on that note, that wraps up this episode of New Product Rundown. Look for a review of the Mirage in an upcoming issue of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. Really? <laughs> what are you, 12? <laughs> Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. I'm Elizabeth Nash. And I'm Aaron Skinner. We'll see you next time. I don't think so. What are you doing, cheater? I'm the one that's supposed to be cheating. I'm you don't need that part. You don't need that part. It was an extra part. <laughs> oh, go together. All right. Ah, you're going to lose. I'm not going to lose. You are going to lose.